Uh, honey, you need to <laughs> detangle before you wash. What kind of business strategy is this? What kind of business are you running? That doesn't make any sense to me. I was like, I hope that this goes well because they might be crying, okay? I was like, I don't get it. Like, what? All right, let's transform this hair. I want to do a sleek, slicked back ponytail. But first, these braids got to come out. And let me tell you a story about how these braids came to be. So I went to a popular, or I would, I would imagine that it's a popular hair salon here in Houston, although I can't really confirm. I've been there twice, and this was my second and last time. So I went to a hair salon in the Houston area. And I like referrals. I'm the kind of person that's going to go to someone or go somewhere based on referrals. It's just easier that way. It makes me feel more comfortable. So I went there because a friend of mine goes there all the time. I won't discuss the first time that I went, I'll discuss this this most recent time. So I DM'd the, the company to inquire because my nieces were in town and mainly I wanted their hair to be braided and they are little kids. So I wanted to know what style they recommended for children. They offer walk-in services. So my thing was, do I walk in with children or is that an adult offering? Like, what do you recommend? Do you feel me? And then I wanted to find out if Saturdays were very busy for walk-ins and if they recommended a different day for me to do the hair appointment. So I have two nieces, I needed two different hair appointments and I thought that they offered kid styles and then I inquired about them. And my main concern was which of these can be done more quickly because I <laughs> I don't have time. And I also don't know how well my nieces are gonna behave in the chair because they don't get their hair braided very often. And while I was looking at everything, I was like, hold on, you know what? I can actually get my hair braided too because it's been a while and I had been wanting to try some cornrow. In my mind, I was thinking to do cornrows, but then I was looking on their page and I saw that they offered stitch braids, which are these. This is a week old, a week and a day old. I said, well, let me go ahead and find out about these stitch braids. Now my hair blow dried, you'll see me blow dry all over again. My hair blow dry goes down to here. So I can't really cut this. <laughs> I have to literally start from the bottom to unravel. So I booked the stitch braids for myself and then I booked the two appointments for my, my nieces and it was for a Saturday. I booked them all at the same time because in the DM lady said, your best bet with the children is to make an appointment. And I said, okay. So I made an appointment for one adult and two kids and we drive over there. So on the site, just like a lot of stylists or salons, you have penalties if you arrive late, blah, 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 blah. And I never want to be that person who was holding things up, not to mention it was six people on a Saturday with two kids, seven and three. And I don't want to be out here just there too late. And already I was like, I hope that this goes well because they might be crying, okay? So we show up like 10 minutes early and you're supposed to arrive early. I had agreed and I made a note in the booking that I wanted to use their hair because if you're gonna bring your own hair, you gotta come 15, 20 minutes early for them to parse it out or whatever they be doing. So I did that. I came early and I already in indicated that I wanted to use their hair. So we walk in and then there's one lady walking toward us and I greeted her and turns out she was gonna be my braider. And I was like, okay, good, perfect, she's right here. So we sit down and she starts on me. So long story short, an hour later, no one had begun on the chair. Children. I'm like, so who's gonna do the kids hair because it's now seven o'clock and this hairstyle took two hours. We're halfway there, we're halfway done. And I'm thinking, I mean, their hairstyles were gonna be maybe two hours, three max maybe, but I was really gonna go for whatever two hour style they could do that was part of the back to school program braid special. And they're like, you can tell that they did not know what the hell was going on. And one of them is like, well, I know that I'm supposed to do one of the, one of the girls hair. And I was like, well, hold on a second. Cause when I walked in, the other braider who says she's gonna do one of the girl's hair was just now washing someone's hair in the back. So I was like, excuse me? So when she said that, at that point, she was she had the, the client in the chair and she was blow drying her hair. And I'm like, what? You are the one braiding her hair? Oh, and in my head, I'm like, excuse me? I had an appointment for three people at six. So I clarified that and I was like, I don't get it. Like, what? And I'm thinking, there's no way you're even close to being done. So all this in conversation, the, even she was just like, yeah, the day got pushed back. I don't know what happened in that establishment during the day, but my thing is that has nothing to do with me. And I was told that there was a six o'clock appointment for three people. So if there's a delay for some reason, the professional thing to do, this is not about the braiders, it's about the company. The professional thing to do would be to contact the, uh, the booker of the appointment, communicate this or something to me and perhaps offer the opportunity for me to reschedule. You feel me? Instead of having me drive all the way over here, to be early because that's your rules and to not even have someone to accommodate or to fulfill all three appointments. So imagine my disgust 
and disappointment because I really wanted my niece's hair to look nice. And I, here I am halfway done, almost done with mine, reached out via DM, reached out to my friend who then reached out to the company. I text messaged the number that's on their IG page, no response. And I'm just like, excuse me? The braider was doing what she could to reach out. And we're just like, this is insanity. And you know, the other braider who said that she was gonna take one of my nieces after she finished the, the client's hair, which I mean, when I finished my hair, two hours later, she was still braiding that lady's hair. So she had washed her hair, blow dried her hair, and then she was gonna do two big stitch braids. It took a long time. Lady had a lot of hair. It took a while, okay? So once it was seven, like 7.15ish, when somebody finally reached out to me from a number that I didn't have in my phone. So it wasn't from that business number that I had contacted. It wasn't in my DM. It was somebody else that had contacted me and basically was saying that the braider, not even anything about the delay with the braider who was there. The braider that was supposed to do one of the kids' hair, had some kind of emergency and they've been trying all day to find someone else to braid the hair, excuse me? So you take appointments without actually having someone available at that time? What kind of business strategy is this? What kind of business are you running? That doesn't make any sense to me. You do walk-ins. So now I'm thinking, so if I were to walk in, you don't have braiders just sitting there. Walk-in means you walk in and somebody notices you just walked in and then they what? Send out a blast message to find anybody, anybody out there? who was available to come in and depending on how far they live or where they're at, you gotta wait for them to drive over there. That is, is that how walk-ins work? Yeah, now this is my second time going there. I don't go to hair salons. I don't like going to hair salons. I like doing my own hair. I don't like the shenanigans. I don't like all this foolery. And you know, this is why. So I'm just like, ew, if, thank God I didn't do a walk-in because then that would've been really atrocious, right? And if I had walked in, I was gonna do it early in the day, mind you. But anyway, so the lady's trying to say she's so sorry, all this, all that. And, and can you come in tomorrow? at four and I'm like, there's no way I'm coming back here. I'm actually never gonna come back here again. That's number one. And you know, the, whoever I was talking to, and this is my thing too, is when you are in contact with someone in customer service about a problem, normally they will introduce themselves to you with their name. I don't even know who I was speaking with, okay? That to me is a problem. You should say, hi, this is so-and-so with so-and-so company. This is a leave-in conditioner. L'Oreal Elvive Hyaluron Plump. I should use a cream, not cream. You know, you should say who you are so that I have a reference who for who I am speaking with. But I really felt like that was real shady and unprofessional. So I explained very clearly how the behavior and the process and the whole experience was extremely unprofessional, that my expectations were not met, nor was my time respected, that I appreciated that they offered me to come in the next day for a free hairstyle for the kids. But I said, absolutely not. I would never be returning to this establishment. I loved my braids. They ended up comping the braids, which I, I didn't expect, but it was nice. Highly turned off by the experience. The braider was very sweet. My issue was not with the braider. She did a phenomenal job. And you know, I don't keep my hair in for a while anyway. So one week was more than enough, honey. And that's why I, I like the idea of having cornrow instead of the braids. But you know, I'll do a little some some every now and again, cause I like to switch up my hair, obviously. So here we are doing a ponytail. I'm reminded that I used to get the silk presses every now and again, and that helped to straighten out my curls, loosen up my curls, which I actually prefer. I like my curls to be more loose because it lays better when I slick it down and just do different styles. So I'm like, oh, okay. I haven't been to the hair salon in over a year. I need to be at home blow drying my hair and straightening it every now and then, just like I would at a salon, so that I can loosen my curls because all the hair that has grown since that last soap press and keratin treatment that I did that I think ruined my hair. Ever since that time, my new growth is so thick. It's so thick and so kinky. So I'm gonna be straightening it more often to help loosen up the hair that's at the roots. So that, you know, at the at the base of my head. So let me unravel all this hair and come back. I actually decided not to use that spray because it's just, it's just, this is easier. This is the Amica Hydro Rush Intense Moisture Mask. Let's take some of this, nice and creamy. And believe me, I've gone really wrong with the takedown process in the past where I just go right in the shower and then go into the shampoo and all of this, and then I'm ripping my hair out. But I learned from my good girlfriend, Redefined Marie, that, uh, honey, you need to <laughs> detangle before you wash. And I'm just like, what? Like, girl. So. Yeah. Yes, now if I have braids in, like not when I do my cornrow under my wigs, but you know, this kind of situation, professionally done braids, I will put some kind of product, even if it's a curl cream, honey, just something to give it slip and then detangle it. 
and then go wash my hair and then shampoo. I'm gonna link all the products below, by the way. I like this brush a lot because it opens, it separates when I'm brushing my hair so that if I catch a snag, it doesn't rip my hair out. Ooh, this is gonna be a little messy. So when you put something on the hair like this, it helps it to get a little bit of a slip. I'm wetting the brush to help get more, <laughs> to help get more slip, you know, just a little more. Because my hair is not wet per se. Yo, look at my hair, this is wild. Of course it's still stretched because I blow dried it. You can't even see it. It goes almost down to my <laughs> middle of my stomach, crazy. Okay, all the braids are out, detangling is done. I will say that this is the chunk of hair that came out on this brush. Now, one thing to note is that this is not all my hair, although yes, a good amount is my hair. You have to keep in mind that with the braids, some of the hair is still gonna be wrapped up into your hair, hence why the detangling is very important if you have natural hair like me. So I've detangled both sides. My curls look so juicy. I like this product a lot, this Hydro Rush. I am going to shampoo, condition and then put some more of this in, detangle it again, and then we're gonna blow dry. All right, hair is washed. Let's take it down and blow dry. <laughs> Yo, good God almighty. The damage in the front of my hair is wild, but we still move, don't we? We're doing a ponytail, so you're not gonna see the issues with the damage. Let me part it down the middle and blow dry it in two halves. I got the Mazzani heat screen, heat protective spray. I just washed and conditioned my hair. I did not put any oil or anything else inside of it. So now here's this. And I wanted to put some oil in it, but now I'm feeling like I shouldn't, that I should just do this, right? Will it weigh it down if I put oil in my hair? I'll do the oil afterwards. I'm gonna use my T3 blow dryer. This is really good because last time I used it, it got my hair really straight. So we'll see if I want to flat iron it after this. Maybe, maybe not, let's see. This thing can get really hot, oh my God. Okay, yeah, now looking at it, I'm reminded that, yeah, this is okay for braiding. If I was gonna braid my hair, but for the ponytail, I'm gonna definitely have to flat iron this. So we'll come back to that. Okay, my hair's all blow dried and I had this part twisted up, that's why it's crimped but it, what is it giving right now? Is it giving lioness? 